what is up guys hope we had a good fourth if we decided to celebrate america's birthday yes i <laughs> could see why you wouldn't want to <laughs> it's been a little it's been a funky year <laughs> or few. to say the least yeah. or the, yeah i mean handful i could say i could say 27 <laughs> but who's counting <laughs> Welcome to the Red Rum and Red Wine Podcast, the podcast where we talk about murder, mysteries, and mishaps while being two of them ourselves. Hi, I'm one. My name is Kristen. I'm your other mishap, Sarah. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Hi. <laughs> if you think we're equally as cringe on, on audio, go check us out on our fucking TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> we made a TikTok. I'm 18 now. I so. feel like an... Uh, <laughs> like elderly person trying to figure that shit out so okay, bear with yeah. us as we <laughs> elders figure out this millennial shit okay i have we're I not have millennials right uh no yeah we are oh we're millennials yeah. well, that's just sad no that's the fun that's the fun one i guess I like being a millennial like the gen zers i'm like oh I, that's what i'm thinking of i think the gen, gen Zers. is the next one yeah no they're okay they're the weird ones millennials are cool at least I, I am one, so okay. <laughs> I have to think that. Uh, okay, I'll partake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll drink the we Kool-Aid. We have to. I I... We have to, otherwise <laughs> we're fucking losers. I have no choice, actually, but... <laughs> you know, that's, uh, what is it? We're not under duress. We actually enjoy being millennials, yes. I'm <sighs> a cool 26-year-old. Mm, yeah just out me for being fucking older that's cool oh i turned 27 (laughs) in like four months (laughs) okay i turned 28 in like (laughs) eight months i I, I can't do math right now i'm guessing it's like a long shot guesstimate yeah (laughs) i'm even even though we are drinking this episode it is a fucking struggle for (laughs) sure i'm 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 mainly using my drink which is a white claw shout out raspberry flavor lovers um as like a little hair the dog kind of trick because oh i did not hydrate myself enough yesterday and i'm suffering extensively for it oh my god yeah yeah well good so i got Got my water, got my white claw. What are what are we partaking in on the other side of the Over on this oh, side I, of the yes. on the greener <laughs> the take, gr- it away. <laughs> take it away. <laughs> I can't I can't on the greener side of th- I'm just kidding. Um <laughs> I am drinking not water and a mimosa. Just a mimosa. Mimosa. Yes. <laughs> I'm from, mimosa I'm from the Texas. <laughs> not Michigan. Minnesota. Minnesota. <laughs> Fuck. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm drinking a mimosa made with a lovely Cook's Brut and a great value pulp OJ. Sweetness, yes. That's yes, nice. I am. Um, you know, mimosas, it's a day recording. It's just a good freaking day drink. Wait, did I hear that right? Did you have pulp in your mimosa? Light pulp. You're... <laughs> you're, on the, you're on the you're on the end of the spectrum that is hitting crazy okay we knew that <laughs> it was also the only one they had for great value and like a normal yes. great value sized orange juice is only 30 cents more than one of those tiny tropicana ones you know because i would well, get just a like small you- one because we don't use a lot but yeah, exactly. I just got the bigger one because uh, I got three bottles of champagne, and so I didn't know if that small orange juice would be enough. Yeah. Anyways, it's We're not pointless. That bad. <laughs> it's fucking pointless. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Okay. Also, side note: we had lunch with my aunt, and then met up with Rain and Tyler at Fish City Grill. So we met up with them. They were having lunch, but we just went to grab some drinks, and uh, I had. I think one or two mimosa is, yeah, one or two before I ordered another one. And the bartender was like, I think he, oh yeah, they ran out of orange juice because he had mentioned that he hand squeezed some orange juice. And Tyler was like, oh, y'all do that here? And he's like, no, (laughs) I just had to. (laughs) 
and then I guess they ran out, and so he was like, oh. <laughs> He's such a petty little bitch. He's like, no. <laughs> and um, so he asked if I wanted any other juice in my mimosa, like pineapple or whatever. And I was like, um, no, I'll just have a mimosa with no OJ. And Rain was like, so a glass <laughs> of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had a glass of champagne at the bar. I felt like a classy little lady. Yeah. And when I had a martini, this was at Barley. I felt like an even classier. Oh my gosh. Because I never get drinks. Never get drinks like those. Oh, yeah. Unless it's Barley. Because that's the only type of fun drink you can get in a martini glass. Which is so fucking pointless. And they make so much money off of it. Because how much can really fit in a freaking martini glass? They're it's so insane. small. Um, it's like two sips and it's done. I forgot what it's called, but like when I was serving at Top Golf, this one guy asked for a certain martini, but he asked for it like upside down or it's some phrase, oh. and it's where they put it just in a normal cup because he was a guy who's like, yeah, I don't want to like drink out of a martini Hold cup. It in a martini. But then also, mm-hmm. I feel like maybe one of those cups might be bigger, so like, yeah. you know, oh, maybe he's on to right. something. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me hit off my like. Fuck. <laughs> what? This is gonna be. Yeah, yeah. That was my attempt at an English accent. I'm so <laughs> sorry to the people in England, to actors everywhere. <laughs> I I failed. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, this case is from the UK. But yeah, until I venture back out out of the states this is gonna be my last one and i am so sorry to the people in the last recording i lied this is not the adoption story oh well and i lied it's not really an adoption story it's a foster story but stay tuned next week next week it's gonna be there it's gonna be woozy it's gonna be fucking doozy Ooh. so this one comes from Durham. Durham, England. Oh. And I do, yeah. Again, sorry. It's going to be a long one. Make sure you grab something, Kristen and Sarah's size, whether it be a snack, whether it be a drink, whether it be a friend. <laughs> <laughs> you need you need it there. I, so I found one case in England that I really liked, but it's kind of short, so I'm like, oh, maybe for like a drunk mystery. And then I started like going through the internet and I found this one and I feel like I'm kind of like a bear coming out of hibernation mm-hmm. except like it's me not a bear so it's like sickly looking and pale <laughs> and has a wine lip and I'm like hey. hi <laughs> I'm here to tell you a story yeah. because I've been researching it all night and, and I'm ready for it to be done <laughs> so finally today I'm going to be talking about the Madomsley Detention Center. Ooh. Oh, like not what I was expecting. No, this, I have never heard of this, but there is one case later on that's kind of like tied to it in a way that's somewhat popular. And there's some stuff going on right now that's really like current. It's just like so many layers Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. There's just so much information. I just kept reading article after article and I kept finding things and I there is it's not even all on here. Like it's so insane, but yeah, let's just get into it. So yes. Hell yeah. The Madomsley Detention Center. And yes, it's UK, so center is spelled C E N T R E. It's C E N Oh, Centre. <laughs> er, <laughs> it, if if you're like us and you're terrible at spelling, center is usually spelled for Americans at least C E N T E R. So my brain is now reprogrammed, and probably for like the next six months, I'm gonna look like a freaking idiot if someone asks me to spell center because I've had to type it down so yeah. many times. It's mm. mm-hmm. but oh yes, yes, yes. Before I get started on this case. I do want to give a trigger warning before I get into any of this. This deals a lot with sexual and physical abuse. So if this is something that you are not comfortable listening to, if you do not want to listen to it, I totally completely understand. I will not be offended if you click off. 
go ahead and click off. No problem. We understand. No problemo here. I'll give you a second while I take a sip of my white claw. I'll take a sip of my mimosa and pulp. That really, like, I don't know how we can be friends. Thank God we never lived together because if you brought that home, <laughs> I, I would have just spanked you. <laughs> Naughty, sir. I'd be no. Like, no. no. Slap you across the wrist. No. <laughs> Spray me with the water yes. bottle. <laughs> <laughs> it's holy water, so you go. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, when you when we're at the lake in that one song, can't wait make a wife out of a hoe. Yeah. Oh, came on, and you're like, yeah, you can. <laughs> if anyone proved it, uh, you did. <laughs> that was good. That was a oh, good because it's true. It's true. You know, we're just a host of boys. <laughs> I'm just a ho ho. So the Madamsley Detention Center is actually a prison, or. It's like a level below a prison for young male offenders that is near Consent in Durham, England. And it was opened in 1961 and it was closed somewhere around the late 80s. Okay, so that's more recent than I also expected. So this is fun so far. And the arrests that are made later on, like some of them don't even happen until like 2019. Yeah. <gasps> Whoa. Yeah, it's like some of the shit and like I said like some shit is still going on like to this day with this area it's just like oh my god yeah sorry I'm getting into it so this detention center held around 70 detainees at the time though it could hold up to 130 though I don't think at the it ever at any capacity had uh, the 130 it typically stayed around 70 Okay. It would also have 30 staff members that would be there, and they would be in charge of those 70 young males that would enter the facilities. So the inmates would range around 17 to 21, and they would all be boys, males. I say boys because they're really young, and I will say Mm -hmm. that just to kind of like emphasize that they're still kids. And they're mainly from Northern England and the Scotland area. So... You'll hear me say, like, inmates and prison officers, and it's mainly like a prison, but it's more of a detention center, quote-unquote. So it's meant for first offense charge. And I mean, yeah, that's called a detention center. (laughs) This was typically meant for uh, first offense charges, and they were really minor crimes, like it, crimes that if you were to commit today you wouldn't be thrown into a detention center you would just be given like oh yeah slapped with a fine and like a community service sentence so it's nothing like mm-hmm. big you know we would know yeah, yeah we we <laughs> would know <laughs> and these sentences sentences would typically last around 6 to 8 weeks and then they would be released and fuck that yeah it it's so shitty so basically the whole point of it is for them to like it's like that uh one tv show where they send the young boys into prison to like scare them oh, that's yeah. like basically what this detention center is it's meant to not scare you, you so you don't do it yeah again. it's yeah. they don't want to put them with the older population where they could be influenced or raped or attacked yeah yeah. like they don't want that to happen to them so they throw them into this detention center where it's like a little bit calmer and they can rehabilitate them at least yeah yeah. like seems a little excessive for first offenses but it's like a preventative measure almost yeah and i guess like back then it was like so extreme i don't know it's it's just whatever it's the 60s This would also be a center, though, where more than 1,800 former inmates would report sexual or physical abuse that was done by the staff that work there. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Prison is looking a little bit better. So they were, like, trying to reform these children, but... By traumatizing them. (laughs) damaging them very badly at the same time. It's just... It's... mm, It... The layers get so deep and it's... Let's peel them back. Let's go. Let's start peeling. So a little bit about the center. It was operated by the home office, which for those who aren't English, like Sarah and I, if you can't tell by our American accents, (laughs) (laughs) it's the ministerial department 
of the government of the United Kingdom. So it's basically like they're responsible for immigration, security, law and order. It's like the head honcho that goes under all of those branches. So like whoever's in charge of all of that shit. The detention center was built in 1960 and it was built on top of of a Victorian orphanage. Oh, so is it like added on to it, kind of? You know, out of all the digging, I didn't do much digging back. I know in like a documentary, I did hear a little bit about it. It, I believe that they tore it down and built it back up, but I could be wrong because... Yeah, well, that would make sense too. Yeah, but. I, mm, I, I'm, you know, yeah, out of that one fact... <laughs> That is the one thing I was not prepared for. So, oh, oh, well, (laughs) shit. I just got a 95 on my paper for that one. I probed. You probed. (laughs) You you look like a little alien. Okay. So, (laughs) it was built in 1960, but it wasn't opened until February, February of 1961. And basically, yeah, it was to keep to scare these little kids into saying like hey don't become a hardened criminal be a nice person the one of the newspapers in the town had quoted an attendee of the opening at the center and that attendee had said it will provide the usual sort of regimen of a detention center brisk activity under strict regimen early morning physical training followed by domestic duties and work which for some of the photos i'll post like a lot of it is them doing like in PE clothes and doing hard labor is basically what the true point of this detention center was. If it was run properly, they would work out, do a lot of hard labor and just like basically have a really shitty life for a couple of weeks. Yeah, do chores every day, all day. (laughs) And then like do like kitchen work and all that shit and then like be thrown out into the real world and be like, yeah, do you not want to live this shitty life? Then like, don't do that. Yeah. The Northern Echo would also uh, report that it would offer a simple and secure accommodation while providing a short, sharp lesson for inmates providing brick, brisk activity and yada yada. And the short, sharp lesson I'll get into later, but that's like really um, a really popular lesson for all of the detention centers around the UK to use and I'll get more Uh, into it later but it was just like or like method or yeah like this one lady that was in the government or whatever was like if you use this people will be great Mm. and so everyone was like yeah of course (laughs) totally genius it would take about six years for the detention center to have any type of sexual abuse allegation or physical abuse allegation happen against them. So like come to light kind of. Yeah. Or like be yeah. said about them. So yeah. David Watkins was a recently elected MP for consent, which um, don't know what MP stands for. I'm like, I want to say prime minister, but that's PM. I forget. Obviously. I saw like MOJ and I was like, oh, what's that? And it's Ministry of Justice. So it's Ministry of something. Should we look it up? Should I? Uh, what? Member of Parliament. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so David Watkins, a recently elected MP or member of parliament and i guess was like doing his duties and one of those duties was having to deal with this woman and she had came up and said basically that my 17 year old son had just spent five weeks in a hospital after he had been complaining with abdominal and groin pain after he had just started a three-month stint at Medemsley detention center for assault so when they heard the claims they go to the son and they ask what's what happened why are you saying that you have this pain and he basically says that he was kicked and punched and beaten with a broom as well as other various objects and the staff at Medemsley were the ones who had beaten him up and basically that life there like he compared he compared it to that of being in a war camp damn as soon as this teenager steps forward Three more teens automatically come forward and say that they, too, have been 
victims of assault at Madame's Lee. Damn. So one 17-year-old would claim that he was hit across the chest with a studded belt. And he would also recount how other inmates would go as far as trying to break their own limbs. Like in one of the articles I read, it would say that they would have one boy at the end of the staircase. They would have other boys holding that guy down. And then one of the others would go and try and jump on their leg in order to like break it. Oh. Yeah. Crazy fucking like shit. just to get just away from the officers to get and stuff, yeah like... to be able to be sent to the hospital and like away and you'll see sometimes like that's not even enough oh. it's just like one of the boys recalled that uh nearly every inmate that entered Medemsley had been beaten as soon as they got there and oftentimes they would be forced to hop like bunnies along the corridor and mm. it's not like when I first read this, I kind of thought, I don't like the TikTokers doing that little move. It's just like a little hop and skip. It's nothing bad. But no, later on, it goes to describe they would make them squat all the way down and then <laughs> jump. I would do, I wouldn't even be able to do one. I would fall to the side of the ground. I would be dead. Yeah. Like, it, it's just, <laughs> it, it, they would make them do that all the way down each and every time. And sometimes they would make them do that for the entire night. What the fuck? And if that boy decided that he couldn't do it anymore or like he just needed a little bit of a break, if they would slow down or even stop, the guards would go in and just beat them until they continued. Then it'd be even harder to continue. Exactly. What the fuck? It's just mm, 20-year-old inmate Bishop Auckland would say that he would be punched in the mouth and saw the other boys being hit in the stomach with such force that they would actually be lifted off of the ground. Mm. And about the Benny Hop punishments, he stated that I have heard screams when I have been in bed at night, but no one reports it in case they'll get filled in. So basically, like, out of fear that they'll be that next person to be screaming. Screaming. Yeah. Ugh. So... Obviously, after hearing these horrors that these four inmates have told him about the abuse going on, Mr. Watkins went ahead and contacted the home secretary at the time, and his name was Roy Jenkins. So it would take Watkins nine days to get a response after oh. he sent this horror, phone call this request? phone call of fucking horrors or email of horrors, whatever you want to say of whatever is going on. Because this is the late 60s, right? Yeah. I Well, I think by this time it was 67. Yeah, late 60s, yeah. 67. So the response that Roy Jenkins' office gave Mr. Watkins after him saying everything that I just told you, careful inquiries have been made and there was nothing to substantiate the claims. It was also added that the hospital examination of the 17-year-old revealed that nothing supported the claim that he had been assaulted. Okay. What did he spend five weeks in a fucking hospital for? Yeah. I'm, I just want to know then. Like, I don't know how... I know... Because that means there was damage. England Healthcare, <laughs> maybe email us, let us know. Do you let people stay in the hospital for five weeks just for shits and gigs? Like, that seems weird. Yeah. So, Mr. Watkins Watkins accepted this with no problem. He was like, okay. You looked into it. Okay. Um, okay. He didn't look into it. He asked the wrong person about it. He just fucking didn't. uh, He, quote unquote, looked into it. He's dead right now, if that makes anyone happy. Yeah, I guess. Yes. It's just upsetting. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> it, it. It eases. So, of course, though, it would take six years for these abuse allegations to happen. It did not take six years for this abuse to happen. So a home mm-hmm. minister at Medemsley said that it took just months within opening the doors for it to be an unpleasant experience for young criminals. Of course. Fucking sickos. Yeah. So that 
short, sharp, and shock regimen that I was talking about earlier. It's actually from Margaret Thatcher's incoming government. Oh. Mm-hmm. So she... I, I know her. I don't. <laughs> oh. Where, who is she? I mean, I the name sounds so familiar, but if you were to ask me to be like, yeah, who is that? I'd be like, mm, I don't know. I mean, if I am not mistaken... I think she was an important role in the royal because I watched The Crown. Oh, okay? yeah, so I she haven't. was. I haven't. <laughs> she was one of the prime ministers. Uh, the Queen went through a lot of prime ministers in her early reign. I think, mm-hmm. from what I understand, and Margaret Thatcher was like the. She was like the only female of the time. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, she was prime minister from 1979 to 1990. Yeah, well, she was kind of, eh. She Yeah, she was really <laughs> weird, and um, she ended up suffering a downfall. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because uh, her incoming government had a really weird regime to detention centers. So she basically brought on the thought that like military style discipline would be a better deterrent to getting young criminals to rehabilitate than any other method. Yeah. And in March of 1985, the home secretary Leon Britton would actually visit Medemsley and praise the positive impact that this regimen was having. Oh, it wasn't really positive though. Um, it, yeah, <laughs> actually was just a major excuse for the abuse and assault that was going on. Detainees at Medemsley would be dragged from the toilet semi-naked if they, to the guards, didn't finish their business fast enough. Or I guess if like they were preparing food and decided to take a break, they would be ripped out from the toilets if they took too long. Oh my god. They would also be force-fed salt if they ever talked during a meal. And one of the main punishments that pretty much, like, I feel like every guard would do, like, not every guard would be a complete asshole, but pretty much everyone there would at least punch an inmate if they didn't call them sir. Oh, yeah, okay. In one instance, they would put Rod Jones in a laundry basket who Rod Jones was an inmate there. They would put him in a laundry basket. They would tie the basket shut and drag him a quarter mile to the shower blocks where they would then put a hose in and basically (gasps) fill it up. And he compared that experience to being waterboarded, basically saying that like he nearly drowned. He oh, he feared for his life. He literally thought that he was going to die. Yeah. And I'm, I for couldn't him. imagine, like, that quarter mile drag, because it's a drag. It's not a run. Like, you don't think it's that long. But if you're being drug, that's a yeah. that's a good amount of time to wonder. Like, and you know what's coming. Yeah. Like, what is Are about like- to happen? Mm-hmm. Like, is uh, it's just so terrifying. There was another inmate, David Allen Brown, who was brought into Medemsley. So he was brought in for uh, committing a burglary in a local supermarket, but he claims that he did not do it. So he essentially is in Medemsley for a crime that he did not commit. Hmm. So during his time at the detention center, he would talk about how they would be forced to do fence runs, which... Skip over 30 seconds if you hate running, because I heard this and (sighs) I wanted to fucking die. Oh, God. I'll pass out right now. They were forced to run four miles in under 35 minutes. I'm like, uh, one mile in 35 minutes, please. (laughs) I'm (laughs) that. I saw that in my stomach. Like, I automatically became sick. I Okay, so let me do my math on paper here. 35 divided by a floor okay mm-hmm. that is like oh my god <laughs> is the math even right <laughs> how do i do this again I, how do i, I how do i how many miles how do i divide again it's like a fo- phone okay phone it's, technology. it's like it's like a what a six minute mile no it's like a six and a half minute mile i'm like is it 35 over four or four over 35 <laughs> 
It's a eight minute and seven eight point seven five minute mile. Okay. But for four miles, it's not, yeah. I mean, that is like some in shape shit. Yeah, you <laughs> you would have to be in shape, honestly. They would be forced to do this four miles in thirty five minutes, and basically, David couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'm sure some of them could, but not everyone. And the ones who couldn't would be beaten by the officers. One officer in particular, his last name was Onslo, would make him run barefoot if he didn't complete it in a certain amount of time. And we're talking about like he's running outside in a English terrain. I don't know how y'all's terrain is. I've never visited, but... Depending on the location, it's usually kind of green. I'm like, I might like that. I know, but then I just think of some rocks. There, So there was a documentary, um, and it's on YouTube. It only has like 2,000 views, and it's very... It talks about uh, Alan Rickwood. It's called Alan Rickwood and the Metamsley Detention... Or the Metamsley Heroes. And it is this one guy, Bill Maloney, who was basically like living in foster care his whole life and has been in a detention center and abused. It wasn't Metamsley per se, but it was just like Mm -hmm. in his life he had been sexually abused and he is fighting to protect the children in the area of shit like this because you'll see later on like it's a very much like reoccurring thing this doesn't just happen here it's not just happening in England England don't think that I'm coming for you like the Kentucky Derby here in the states just literally had a big pedophile ring mishap like it's he's just trying his best to bring awareness to it so he makes this I think like hour two hour documentary on YouTube if anyone wants to watch it it's the documentary is a different experience to say the least watching it but it definitely gives you some really raw and in-depth insight to what happens to some of the victims and to victims in surrounding areas so back to the victim David he would also talk about how during the night he would hear the doors of the dormitory squeaking open and how he would actually hear like lads getting dragged out of their bed and how it would go quiet and then he would describe the fear that he would feel set in the environment that you would be the next one. Ugh. So the asshole that I was just talking about Onslow his full name is Christopher Onslow and he was known as like one of the most abusive officers at Metamsley, and he was often the most feared by all of the inmates. He Mm. would get the nickname The Machine for, like, his maliceness towards every inmate that would step through the door. So he would often be the ones to beat everyone up. With one teenager, he would actually smash his face in with his boot, breaking his nose, and then he would, Onslow would proceed to strike him on the side of his head, tearing his ear. (gasps) And then again, continue the assault by dragging this boy to another area where he could go get a medicine ball and then hurled it at him while this boy foamed at the mouth. Oh, my God. There was another inmate at the detention center who was also a little overweight. So Onslow used this and would. Sorry. I know. You're like, overweight. I'm just like, I want to be sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> to I'm sorry. Subject. It's like not hilarious. It's just kind of funny how Kristen said it. Okay. No, I went to a funeral. Um, uh, it wasn't a funeral. So I went to a party to celebrate the life of someone that was just lost. And when I went to go hug one of her daughters, I did like the hi. And I was like, shit, <laughs> I'm one of those people that just did that like, Oh, hi, like, sad. And I could just, like, hear the eye roll in her voice. I was like, shit, I'm not. I don't know how to act in these without laughing and saying, hey, do you want a shot or a hit of weed? Like, and she's 12, so I can't say that. (laughs) (laughs) She's not 12. She's a little bit older, but not old enough to Um, do that. (laughs) It's just like, oh, yeah. So I get it. I get it. 
that. But yes, he, <laughs> he was he was a little overweight, okay? He he was a little chunky and there was nothing wrong with that. But Onslow used that as his main target and would often pick on him like all the time. Oh. There was one time where the inmate was doing an obstacle course and had actually gotten stuck in the net that's like meant to catch you if you fall. Oh. And Onzo and another warden had used bricks and stones to basically hit him and knock him off of the net. <gasps> it was a 12 to 20 foot drop. Oh my. And it crushed three of his vertebrae. <gasps> now, when this guy was on the ground fucking crying in pain because he just broke his fucking back... Onslow told him, shut up, you soft bastard. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> no. I'm just like, God, like, okay. What was the, they would give him a body cast, but it would be weeks. Like, it took him weeks to be taken to a hospital. <gasps> it's healing wrong already and he's fucked because he's overweight and bad back like no offense but having that extra weight on a bad back is not good Ugh, just i couldn't i i couldn't imagine being in that kind of pain in a body cast for more than one hour no Mm -mm. weeks dude i can't sit still for five minutes and they would like make him walk <laughs> They would still, like, make oh. him do shit, apparently, within those weeks. It's I'm just like, dude, even breaking your back is not enough to get out of this fucking hell. It is so insane. So there was another officer, John McGee, who would punch a kid solid in the face upon him entering Madam's Lee. As soon as the kid entered. Obviously, in terror, this kid soiled himself. Yeah. And McGee would make him bunny hop all the way to the stalls if he wanted to clean himself off. Ugh. Imagine if it was number two. I, mm. And that's what I think of when they were saying, like, they ripped them off the toilets. Toilets, yeah. yeah. Ugh. Ugh. One victim would say that the prison officers would also orchestrate the violence done by the inmates. So... If he would see him getting bullied, punched, or slapped by another inmate, he would look for help by one of the wardens there. Like, hey, I'm getting beaten up. Save me. This is your job. And he would just yeah. see them standing at the door smiling. Oh. And then he would later tell them that you're worthless. That's why you're in there. And you're no good. Nobody wants you. There were also rumors that many of the staff belonged to an organized pedophile ring, and these rumors uh. mm -hmm, these rumors would have some truth behind it when a certain man by the name of Neville Husband came into Madam's Lane. Ew! Neville Husband? I know. I want to say something, but I'm sure a lot of British Ew. people are named Neville. <laughs> yeah, probably, because Harry Potter. Neville Longbottom. Sorry, yeah. Neville. <laughs> That is a weird but, name, though. I mean, I would think it's kind of cute and trendy. Until they do something bad, and then it just turns, until like, kind of creepy. Until it's a gross Neville. Yeah. yeah, and it's if it's a gross Neville, it's just creepy. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's not a bad name. But in this case, it's the worst. Ew. So, Neville husband was a devoted husband. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and Ew. And father to one child. And he was brought into the Medemsley Detention Center in order to run the kitchens during the late 70s and early 80s. So Tim Newell was one of the governors that had worked at Medemsley during the time that Neville had worked there. And Newell was fully aware of a previous assault that Neville had had with young boys prior to his employment at Medemsley. So... In 1969, Neville Husband had gotten caught with pornographic images of teenage boys, but oh. he would get away with it after claiming that these images were needed for research for a book. Mm-hmm. And did So Book ever get released? Of course not. Hello. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. 
Neville would also get extra privileges with his good standing with the governor. So he would be the only one who was allowed access to the kitchen. He would be given the only pair of keys. And when searches were made after abuse claims, Neville's kitchen would be the only one to not be searched. Okay. So James Miller Reed was another governor there at a different time other than Newell. But he would be the governor to kind of like give him the keys and all of these extra privileges. And at the time that all of this was coming to light, James actually committed suicide as soon as the trial Uh, started. Fucking course. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of rumors that he was actually a part of a lot of the sexual abuse claims that were going on. I wouldn't fucking be surprised. Mm -hmm. James, obviously, would allow Neville to do this because every day that he worked at Madamsley, he would rape a boy, often (gasps) silencing them with threats that they would be killed if they said anything. And Neville worked there for 17 years. (gasps) Okay, I have... I feel like I have bugs crawling all over my body. Yes. And I just cannot imagine what pure torture those boys went through. Mm -mm. And I'm going to take a sip of my mimosa now. Yes, you can see why murder is not needed in this case, because it is already fucking horrible enough, even though it still squeezed its way in there, of course. Even though, yeah. We'll get into that a little later. Mm -hmm. So Neville husband would hide alcohol in the kitchen. He would store use a storeroom as a bedroom so he converted it into his own little bedroom and he would put sexual paraphernalia inside and he would often use that as the place where he would force boys to sleep with him each night so neville would target boys who he knew did not have any type of family support and typically a lot of the boys coming into this detention center were coming from like foster care or right not or from really troubled homes so it was kind of a wider range of pickings for him unfortunately everyone was vulnerable yeah in some sense so he had even told one of his victims that if he had said anything to anyone he would be found hanging if his in his cell and To victim Kevin Young, which he had been one of husband's kitchen trainees that had worked under him and, of course, had been abused under him. He So Kevin waived his anonymity to share his story about what happened to him there. And when husband had made this threat to Kevin, it had really scared Kevin because, according to him, two boys had already been found hanging at the Institute that year alone. Oh, my God. So, of course, when he heard this, he was terrified and just, like, automatically did whatever Neville wanted. And Young had spent his childhood, of course, in care. And he would find himself at Madams Lee when he was caught possessing a $12 watch that his brother had stolen and given to him. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. I know. Like, Ugh, that's the worst. I want to be so mad at the brother, but, like, you can't. It's just, like, that is the most unfortunate series of events. Yeah, I'm mad at the brother, okay? A little bit. It's like, dude, if anyone should have gone to Well, because if anything, he could have been like, I stole it. Yeah. I gave it to him, but did he? I don't know. But Sometimes, even if you say something, it won't It wouldn't work. even, yeah, because that's what I was going to say. Like, even if he said it, would they have... It's, but then, like, they both would have been taken in. I just, like... It was yeah. just so all-around shitty. So, <laughs> of course, as soon as Neville saw Kevin, he decided that he would be his trainee in the kitchen, and... When you first get to Madamsley, the kitchen position seems like the cool position to get because, of course, you get a lot of perks when you're in there. You don't, you get a lot of food. You don't have to yeah. work as hard. It seems like the cool, chillax, like, oh my God, everyone wants to work in the kitchen. But it only took Kevin around five days to basically figure out that something was fucking terribly, terribly wrong. Kevin would. S- describe how husband would start grazing his backside uh typically he was 
erect when he did this and oh. uh, would like do it kind of gently as he walked past. And yeah, Ugh. yeah. We women know how that feels because <laughs> literally just whenever someone wants to get by, they have to grab your waist. Yeah, it's just for some like reason. it started off with little shit like that and just went on to full blown sexual assault. And Kevin's testimony is kind of what brings to light the theory of the sexual pedophile ring that uh, went uh. on at Madam's Lee. So Neville would often take these inmates off of the prison ground into crown homes which the government had paid to house these prison staff Uh. so he would take it take these prisoners into the home and basically tie them up with a rope (gasps) and often someone would tighten it until the person passed out because just as Kevin would describe, it was like part of his ritual that Kevin would pass out, I guess, at <gasps> some point or towards the end of his oh. assault. It was also at that point that, though blindfolded, Kevin would say that he and Neville were not the only ones in the room while this was happening. Oh, like other adults were in mm-hmm. there? Ugh. So he would say that one person would be holding the lever around his neck that would be tightening it, constricting his airflow. Another yeah. man would be behind him sexually assaulting him. <gasps> and he, another man would be standing away taking photographs. <gasps> uh, mm. And he would even recognize when looking at the, like, when you look all the way down, you have a blindfold. You can sometimes see a little bit through. Yeah. That he would see a pair of brown loafers that were eerily similar to the Governor James Miller Reed's loafers that he wore around Medley. And he was the only one who wore those type of brown pair of shoes. And he was which one again? He was the one that gave husband the special privileges to... Skip the searches to have the locked storage room. Right. And Kevin would also say at the time, like, he would be raped by multiple men at this point. Yeah. So. One of husband's other victims, Roy Poor, who also waived his anonymity, would bravely come forward to talk about his story about being sent to Medemsley after he was sent there at the age of 17 for stealing some biscuits. So Poor would describe how husband would shove him against the wall with his hand around his neck, often squeezing it and telling him that he would do whatever husband wanted. And out of fear, Poor would simply comply. Yeah. And although he did it out of fear, he said that his life would still be ruined in the process, even though he survived oh, yeah. his experience, obviously. Right, because sometimes people prefer death over the trauma you're left with. Yeah. Another victim. Worse. Yeah, yeah. It's So another victim, David Stoker who had also been sent to Medemsley for theft, would tell BBC that his experience with husband made his life like hell. And he was way too frightened to tell anyone. And Mm. out of that, he felt so ashamed and disgusted that he had turned to alcoholism and actually ended up dying of cirrhosis of the liver in 2017. Mm. So multiple accounts of men having pornographic photographs taken of them while they were sexually assaulted or rape came to light. And it would often be a common occurrence that one of the kitchen trainees, which I believe husband would have around 12 at the time, would be forced to sleep in that storage room with husband every night. And I'd imagine he'd probably do two at once also sometimes. I mm, I don't know. There are, Sorry to even say. Yeah. But well, it's not. It's He's sick, so. He is sick. It's so. There's so much more. Like, I know it's a lot and it's hard what I'm saying, but there's so much more. It's so Ugh. fucked up. So in 1985, 
they actually caught this motherfucker husband with uh, pornography and sex toys in his locker at work. Uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want to <clears throat> know what they did. Okay. But also I'm wondering, like, yes, but I'm also wondering what this is the 70, 70s by now, right? 80s. Like mid- 85. 80s. Oh, shit. Fuck. Okay. It's the 80s by now. I'm like, what kind of sex toy sex toys do they have? Like that, a wooden dildo. Like the <laughs> less modern <laughs> sex toys. I don't know. Uh, like a they still yeah, they like have a like wooden s- or no. stone stone like anal plug. They or... had silicone for sure. True. Yeah. Yeah, it's the eighties. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> There's a plastic's lot of been invented. Oh that. no, plastic would be terrible. But like I'm yeah. Silicone for sure. Have you seen those glass like (gasps) dildos? I get (laughs) no the glass butt plugs. Girl, how do you how are you not scared that that's gonna break inside of your asshole and you just (laughs) fuck, yeah, that would just be too much. But instead of doing the right thing and firing and reporting him, they just moved him to Franklin prison and kind of pretended like nothing ever happened. And that was it. That was that. Wow. So fucked up. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. So and like I have said previously, this detention center was not the only place where shit like this was happening. There was a boy named Mark who was incarcerated at a detention center in Kent for a crime that he did not commit. Had went to this detention center was so badly abused that he would turn to heroin and would later overdose after Using it to try and deal with yeah, his demons. Cope. Yeah. Ugh. So it would be said that he would be punished for trying to appeal his case, even though the guilty party had already confessed to this crime. So, like, I'm not. What the fuck? It, yeah, this isn't some, like, he sh- he said, she said, like, Mark. It was factual. Mark literally didn't do it. The guy literally said, hey, I was. Yeah, it was actually me. Like, sorry about that. <sighs> And they did not want to let him out. He would actually be beaten under the authorization of Maggie Thatcher and forced (gasps) to stand naked for over 24 hours while staff and other workers would walk past. Oh, my God. Though it was never confirmed, it would be speculated that he was sexually abused. Yeah. Ugh. Inmates at Eastwood Park in Gloucestershire would constantly sub- be subjected to waves and waves of ber- verbal and physical abuse. They would r- routinely be sleep deprived when guards would go and make constant banging noises in their cells. Uh, they would talk loudly over the PAs, kick on their doors, whatever. Yeah. Uh, during the day, inmates were arbitrarily sworn at by guards and were kicked and punched for whatever reason they deemed nothing at all probably yeah and one of the victims there said that more than 30 years later he still had the emotional scars that will forever stay with me i bet yeah like what the fuck it's just like inmates at kirk levington detention center in North Yorkshire were physically abused on a daily basis by officers who were just as sadistic and seemed to enjoy abusing young boys. All the inmates would be subjected to daily uh, violence, whether it be them being depraved by food, them not being able to contact families, uh, or even have, like, letters. If they decided to write a letter, it wouldn't get sent, or if one of their family members sent something to them, it wouldn't get to them. Ugh. One of the victims who was incarcerated in Kirk Levington as a 14-year-old would fear for his life, and he would later emerge as, like, an anti-authoritarian criminal and yeah. <laughs> would view the authority as, like, the enemy, which I'm like, it, yeah, th- Obviously. that <laughs> happens when you fucking, like, make the... Abuse your authority. It's just like, like He would go on to spend most of his life in and out of prisons, which I'm like, yes, this regime does not fucking work it's not how you try to rehabilitate someone it's no like the exact opposite like i get trying to scare someone with the prison concept 
but that's not still like it's just that only goes so far yeah to where it's 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 like it's really like a slap is even a lot it's just like uh, it's a very thin line and you did not have no hesitation in crossing it oh my god right so the Watton Detention Center, another center in Nottinghamshire, was described as terrifying for everyone. A former inmate, James Carey Rice, would spiral into violence re- and repeatedly be reoffended and released after having his experience here. The 15-year-old was punched in the face repeatedly. Immediately upon arrival, again, for not saying sir, that was like a very common thing around these detention centers. Yeah. And once inside, inmates, uh, he said that inmates would have their self-esteem constantly lowered by guards. And uh, the motto there was to all be beaten, punished, and humiliated. Oh, what a fucking motto. Mm -hmm. He would. Yeah, totally. (laughs) He would recall how the children, because that's what they were because this like this isn't metamsley these kids are 14 15 so they're literal children would recall them crying during the night and would hear his friends being severely beaten in the hallway and then less than a month after being released james would go on to hang himself at the age of 14 in 2004 14 year old adam rickwood which we could do a case about this child alone it is insane he would become the youngest child to die in custody for more than a century in britain's history (gasps) holy shit he was found hung in hassock field which i will get to later on is metamsley pretty much like okay. they Metamsley closes and Hassock's field opens. Okay. So it's the same place. Yeah. Finds him hung. He has a broken nose and a broken wrist. Officers had violently beaten him. One of the officers used what he described as a nose distraction technique <gasps> to disarm him. It, like six prison guards went on top of him and just basically like beat the shit out of him and then threw him in a cell with a bloody nose and basically said that they left him unattended. And when they came back a couple of hours later, they found him, quote unquote, hung. Right. So he died and they hung it, hung him to cover it up. Yeah. So an inquest was made into his death to find that, in their opinion, yes, this is a suicide. You don't need to look any further into it. But obviously the family and a lot of other people think otherwise. Obviously. Right. That the yeah. fucking officers fucking did it so now we're getting into the investigation into metamsley so how how did it all come in together well it didn't it didn't happen quite like you think well maybe by how the story is going you did think it would go this way so during all of this abuse 14 inmates would go to police and beg for help Say, hey, I've been abused. This happened to me. Please help me. And the police would either turn them away or completely ignore them. And out of the 14, five of them would report in Durham. Just fun fact. So Report in Durham? England. Just like oh, the, uh, the, the city. Right. The city yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought it was some <laughs> term for a second, and then I forgot it was it, the place. It's yeah. just a place. It's fine. So, uh... They did find one of the officers that had actually ignored the boy's requests that, hey, something was going on. But at this point, he had died, so there wasn't anything that they could do. And Kevin, which I talk a lot about Kevin. Kevin is, like, seriously the strongest soul in the world. He is very, like, on every platform that he can to really, like, share his story and share his experience and really goes into the grit detail of what happened to him even though it may not be the most comfortable thing just to help others so i like really big props to him he's was he's just a really strong dude so i really appreciate him going out and doing that 
but thank you kevin yes thank you kevin thank you so he would actually talk about uh how as soon as he was released from metamsley he would go straight to the consent police station and he would still have the bruises that husband had just given him like on his neck from the rope being around him from his hands being around him and he would show the officer here are the bruises here's all of this evidence here's my account like this abuse is happening to me after he showed him the marks He was told that it would be a criminal offense to make such allegations against a prison officer. Okay, even if they were true? Even if it's fucking assault? (laughs) I'm like, I'm just... The Durham police would confirm this. So he's not just, like, making this bullshit up. The police actually would confirm that, yes, Kevin went to the police, told them of his account, and the police fucking denied him. It's wow, horrifying horrifying that this happened so during 1977 and 1985 they would have prison inspectors quote unquote they fucking suck at their job and they would come and visit the center and the only complaint that would come from these inspectors would come on the very last year that they were there which is the year that husband would get fired in 1985 and it stated that the kitchen was in a deplorable state Oh, I didn't really go into much detail for the sake of the length of the podcast, but it's just in a shitty state. Yeah. I mean, that deplorable says it all. Yeah. Yeah. But it just like, I really can't even believe I'm saying this. There was a chance for this entire thing to be covered in 1982 when two inmates died within months of each other at Metamsley. Okay, and why didn't it? So, I'll tell you about the deaths first. Ian Shackleton, on September 1981, had slipped into a coma and died (gasps) after a mix-up over his access to his insulin because Ian was diabetic. Okay, Uh uh-huh. Ian was 18 years old and had just been at Madamsley for six days <gasps> during these six days no one bothered to discover what type of diabetes he had or the dosage of insulin that he needed to use it was like the mom or the dad had given the insulin said hey here's what it is and then someone yeah. was like oh, okay or and just you know i wonder if the lack of insulin could do the same it's it said in some articles that uh yeah they just didn't give it to him like he wasn't allowed access to his medication was the actual yeah. proper terms but these articles are being nice and saying that there was a access issue right which can mean the same yeah. yeah but it's like they they just literally didn't give it to him and in six days he just ended up slipping into a coma and dying gross i mean not to him dying but to the him not receiving the proper care it's so fun <laughs> So when he started to like slip into the coma like state, uh, I guess they tried to, in a desperate attempt, make a hold of uh, some family member because in their minds, they're like, oh, if this person doesn't die, then like we can do whatever we want with them because if they don't die, then it's like easier to cover up. And I guess in their minds, so they want this guy to live. That's the only reason why I could justify this next action. They end up calling his sister to like ask for what dose he should get. And she couldn't remember, which I'm like, this is not to talk shit about her or anything because I couldn't, I, I got my son's birthday wrong the other fucking day. Like I'm not going (laughs) to, I'm not going to remember a dosage of insulin. Like she ended up giving a really low number and uh, it ended up like, that was the onset of what brought him into the coma but it was just so devastating to read it and it's just like your fucking last minute pathetic attempt is not in any way for you to try and say like oh I tried to save his life like you just literally didn't fucking give him medication that he needed it's so disgusting basic fucking care so the next victim would be David Caldwell so it, this all happened only five months later. Ugh. David Caldwell was 17 years old. He was serving a three-month sentence for theft. 
and he would suffer a severe asthma attack after he was allegedly left under left unattended for two hours in Madame Lee's hospital wing. So he was in the wing because he had just gotten the shit beat out of him. And of course. they put him in the hospital or in their quote unquote hospital wing and basically just left him to suffer a asthma attack and die. His theft charge was for driving a tractor on a building site. <gasps> mm-hmm. So he didn't actually take anything. He was like trespassing, but they yeah. consider it, considered it theft because you're like taking property because you're using know. it. I don't even know if it was like his own, um, if it was his tractor or whatnot, but I mean, oh, like, he took the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> like, I really don't know either, but I mean, like, either way, he's, I'm like, He's seven. He's seventeen. Like you can't say that you've done dumb shit. Like he's driving it around right. a building, and he site. could have been fucking using somebody else's tractor or something. Yeah, and to it, mow some like their property. Exactly. Like or, I didn't go like, super into detail over exactly whose tractor or if it was like the building site that gave him a charge. Like right. whatever. But basically, happened. it's no big deal, and it was blown out of proportion. Yeah, it's not something that he deserved in any capacity like this he didn't deserve death for it. yeah it's just so ridiculous so his mother would state that she told the prison guards my son has severe asthma he really can't do that harsh of physical training like y'all want him to because it will bring on an asthma attack and it ooh, and it could be fatal so of course they're like yeah okay no no whatever no problem and just didn't listen and obviously on top of the physical abuse that was happening it caught triggered an asthma attack and they just didn't bother to help him out when he was suffering like either someone was in the room and they just ignored him or not like they say no one was in the room but we really don't know yeah oh my god during the autopsy the mom and the sister were let in to see him Because you obviously, like, have to confirm the body and whatnot. And the mother stated that she saw bruises on his neck. Of course. Yeah. This would also concur to the bruises that she would, like, often see, like, during the visits that she would make to go see him. And Uh. she was going to report to the police officers, like, outside of Medemsley that her son was being abused. But he would go on to tell her, please don't do it. It's only going to make things worse for me. And then weeks later, he would be dead. So her sister, his sister, Carol Kyle, would also talk about how she also would see the bruises on his legs. And when she asked, he said that he was kicked by the prison guards for not saying sir. And he would also be slapped across the face. And she later a call for the case to be reopened in 2014 stating that his natural or that his death because at the time of his death it was written down as natural causes and to her it was just a complete and it was a waste of time when they took her to look at his body she could just see the bruises and she knew how he got there it was simply stupid they knew she told them or the mother had told them how easily he could get an asthma attack um right but the case has yet to be reopened uh there is a petition currently going on at change.org if you want to look it up or i can link it down below as well there's like a lot of stuff that uh we can link for this case but yeah, these two deaths would, again, prompt Mr. Watkins, if you remember the guy who approved the five-week hospital stay for the guy mm-hmm. with no injuries. So he would call the conservative government to hold a full inquiry into Metamsley. So the minister would agree, and three inquiries would be carried out through March and February of 1982, while husband was still working at the center, because I think mm. he left in 1985. Okay. So a report would be published six weeks later after all of the inquiries were done. And this would be done by the Home Office Minister, Lord Belstad. And what he found was that the allegations of maltreatment made by the families were unsubstantiated and cleared the detention center of any blame. He stated... Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> 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 It's all, uh, 
he stated that Medemsley had a good record in the medical and other spheres, and I hope that what happens in these very sad cases will not be allowed to obscure the facts. Okay. What facts so are you're, you talking you're about, sir? you're talking about the complete opposite facts that we need to look at because the facts that are obvious need are... So, okay. so we're going to fast forward to... 10 years from where you're completely wrong. That's... Once again, Mr. Watkins would have accepted these findings. Oh, yeah. No, no. Of course. Of course. course. Yes. Yes. I, too, am partaking in the sexual abuse, and I want to hide it myself. I really (laughs) don't know. I'm just upset with him at this point. Yeah, I mean, of course. (laughs) He's just like, yeah, no problem. It would be uh, two actual police investigations later. That would lead to seven former officers who abused inmates at Madam's Lee to be jailed for nearly 34 years total, which if you're... Between all of them? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, those shitty sex offender laws that make you feel Cute. so good on the inside. Yes. Uh, 34 divided by seven. What? Seven divided by 34? How do you say that properly? <laughs> 34 divided, because, okay, 7 times 3 is 21. 34 divided by 7 is not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's not enough. It's not a lifetime. It's and not that, It's enough. not a lifetime, and that's not enough. Oh, my God, I'm an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I have, like, this notepad oh. where I was trying to do math on, and no. No. <laughs> it's not worth it. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... The two operations that would bring these people to jail. So Operation Halter was the first one. This investigation would lead to the conviction of Neville Husband, which would happen in February of 2003. So he would get eight years for the sexual abuse of five young inmates. And yes, only eight. He would be convicted in 2003 for two more years for the sexual assault of four other inmates. Another officer by the name of Leslie Johnson would also be jailed for six years in 2005. And at the end of this investigation, the lead investigator, Detective Simon Orton, would say that there would be a lot more relating to the victims of husband that would come out. But I would anticipate there are a lot of people who have put it behind them and would simply want to leave it that way. And we have to respect that. Adding, I can only summarize how many other people have been through his clutches. Hell yeah. So the second operation was Operation Seabrook, and this occurred on August 14th of 2013 when police would reopen the investigations into the historical abuse of young inmates in in the Medemsley Detention Center. So they named this, obviously, Operation Seabrook, and it would, the basis would have three aims. It would be to provide the victims with support so that they are in a better place to fully understand the abuse that took place at Medemsley and to gather evidence and prosecute any and all living abusers. So this investigation was carried out by 70 detectives from Durham Constabulary. <laughs> Constabulary. <laughs> Con- yeah. <laughs> Const- Constabulary. <laughs> and with each detective interviewing and collecting statements from different groups of victims. So they had a lot of people working on this. The okay. lead group detective superintendent, Paul Gowandy stated that these were all experienced detectives. They all had special training in order to deal with the victims and this type of sexual abuse that took place. And they would see the victims in person and steer them towards appropriate uh, counseling services, like really try to help out these victims, even like at least to do what they can now. Since they have been so failed in the past, they're just at least trying to give them all the resources that they can now to help them in any kind of way. So John McCabe, who was one of the victims, was extremely grateful for this operation. And he would say that everything that they are doing is really victim focused and they have done so much for the other victims. And it means a lot to me. Uh, Rod Jones, who we had mentioned earlier, was one of the victims who was abused in the 80s. He would unfortunately go on to say that the investigation came too late for him. The majority Mm. of prison officers who did this to me are probably dead or in their 80s or 90s, and he would never be able to receive his justice. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That sucks. It's, yeah. And 
it's just so many opportunities in between it's just really it's it's so easy to see why these people feel the way that they do because they were let down so many times yeah i mean not only let down but literally dehumanized yeah it only took months of hearing story after story for even the most seasoned of detectives on the case to find it hard to work it due to the yeah. severity of the events that they were hearing being described by these victims. By March of 2014, Superintendent Goundry had expressed his shock over the sheer number of victims that had actually come out to say, hey, something happened to me. And the growing evidence of an organized pedophile ring that was leaving some of the victims so traumatized that they were unable to work or even leave their houses. Wow. By February of 2017, over 1,480 victims had come forward to report sexual or physical abuse that was done to them at Madam's Lee Detention Center. Ugh. Heebie-jeebies. That... uh, it's a town. Yeah. It's insane. 32 suspects would be named responsible for torturing these souls. And files of 32 would be given to the Pr- Crown Prosecution Service, which is basically the principal public agency for conducting criminal prosecutions out in England and Wales. And in November of 2017, they would charge seven out of the 32. So Christopher Onslow, who was that really aggressive police officer we had talked about, uh, he was 71 at the time. Brian Johnson Greenwell, 70. Alan Bramley, 69. John McGee, who we had mentioned earlier, 73. Kevin Blakely, 65. David McClure, McClure, 62. And Neil Sowerby, 61. Ugh. They additionally gave six a nice little warning. They were like, mm. If you, oh, okay. Yeah, let me give you a little slap on the wrist. If you do anything further, we'll charge you. Which I'm like, oh, I'm so scared. I, yeah, I just like, got wow. away with everything that they just did. I'm sure. I'm so sure that they're going to stop doing it. Yes. Right. Yes. Of course. They know what not to do now. Ugh. If you're just as pissed as I am that there's only 7 out of 32, it's because the Crown said that some of these abusers were already deceased or some were too difficult to identify based on the evidence and statements given. This is because some of the victims would have a hard time recalling the names or would only know them by the nicknames. Okay. It's... So, it's a really and this is a really common occurrence especially uh not necessarily with children this age but with really young children who don't know how to properly identify your sexual organs they'll say like right. oh he touched me in my no-no square like they're like oh that's not vagina so that's it doesn't matter yeah. it doesn't like, count what does that mean it's not specific, it's not yeah so it it's not count. whatever and i'm just that's so fucking stupid so fucking stupid 71 victims would bravely appear as witnesses in three separate trials between 2018 and 2019. Wow. So recent. Yeah. Very, very fucking recent. And so these, you know, who were children who were abused testifying, they're now in their, like, 30s, They're adults, yeah. They have kids of their own. Like, Kevin Young, he has a son, I believe, but he, I believe he has another child as well. So, Neville Husband would be convicted of rape in 2003 for abusing five teenagers. Uh, He worked in the prison for a total of 27 years, 17 of those which were being in Medemsley. He became a church minister, of all things. (gasps) And was... (laughs) So, he... After uh, he stopped working at the prisons, he joined the United Reformed Church and was currently running two churches when he was arrested. (gasps) Mm-hmm. Yeah. I bet he liked his altar boys. When they arrested him, they found thousands of images of male teenage pornography <gasps> on his church laptop. <gasps> mm-hmm. Idiot. Ew. Mm-hmm. Uh, sicko. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Fucking ew. Not 
so fun fact of the case, the age of consent in the Pope's Vatican City is just 12. Oh. Yes. The Pope has Mm -hmm. apologized for this, apparently, but I don't think he's changed it. (laughs) Yeah. Love church. Uh, Love churches. Love it. it. um, Religion, uh, yes. It's not contradictory at all. No, no, no. no. (laughs) They would, of course, also find explicit novels, videos, a sex aid, which I'm like, is that like a sex pump or something? I'm not really sure. but uh, Yeah, or something. Yeah. So, yeah. He would originally be given the seven to eight years. They would bump it up to 10 but he would end up dying of natural causes seven years later at the age thank of 72 god. Mm-hmm. thank god because i was like that is literally it's nothing I enough so i'm i mean i'm glad he died but at the same time i wish he would have suffered a little more I don't know. yeah like but i wish he would have gotten sentenced more yeah and lived through it all yeah but Ugh. he didn't even get sentenced that much like he almost made it through his whole sentence people that steal cars literally get sentenced more than this which yeah like literally people blows my mind doing nothing attempted get murderers yeah. get sometimes less time than this <clears throat> male on female victims mm-hmm. specifically and that's why this suckers and abusers that's another like this case specifically specifically it just really highlights kind of why uh, another reason why i wanted to talk about this case because it's not that often talked about i would assume because it's a male victim and typically with male victims they are pushed to the side unfortunately which is just like really sad because if regardless of gender age race whatever if something happens to you in life that is tragic you those feelings are valid and you should be able to get the resources to properly help you through that tragic event like and the awareness of the actual situation like yes it happens by men to boys Yes. In ridiculous and sick, brutal ways. Mm-hmm. It's not just men on girls and so forth. Yeah. And I, it's unfortunate, but like that's one of the th- reasons why I think this one gets so left out. But the Ministry of Justice would end up spending 3.6 million pounds alone to compensate for the 237 sexual victims committed by husband. Damn. So just on husband, they spent 3.6 million pounds to make up for his mistakes. Not even mistakes, his fucking just... Of the five men that were arrested in March of 2019, Christopher Onslow would be found guilty of five physical abuse charges and two counts of misconduct by a public office. He was not found guilty of two further physical abuse charges and four sexual abuse charges. Brian Greenwell was found guilty of misconduct in a public office and he was not found guilty of three physical abuse charges and one what sexual abuse charge. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Kevin Blakely was found guilty of two <laughs> charges of misconduct in a public office and he was found not guilty of four physical abuse charges. Ew. Alan Bramley was found guilty of a misconduct in a public office. He was not found guilty of four physical abuse charges. I want to know who the fuck the jury was. It was all men in their late 40s. It's upsetting to... And then, just wait. (laughs) David McClure was cleared of all five charges that he faced. Ew. I'm sorry I keep saying ew. It's just so gross. There's nothing else that you can say. Yeah. Neil Sowerby was cleared of all 10 charges he faced. I think I might gag. If you're if you're going to you're really about to gag, all 5 of the men who were charged have submitted appeals against their convictions. <gasps> mm-hmm. Please tell me they were denied. They're still in jail, I believe. Now, oh, cuz so. it was like recent. Yeah. 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 Oh fuck. So for Onslow, Toby Hedsworth would say the events at Medemsley were part of a bygone age. 
Whatever we now think about how such a regime was likely to pan out, it was, as we heard abundantly in evidence, something that was believed in by those that set it up. The idea that the offenders in detention centers should be somehow rehabilitated did not seem to be part of what was intended. What was designed was discipline and training. So he's just flat out saying, like, we weren't even meant to rehabilitate these motherfuckers. We were just disciplining them. Yeah. A lot of what I said was confusing, but... (laughs) No, but still, ugh. For McGee, Caroline Goodwin would say that this is a man who has prided himself on exemplary conduct and years of good service, often putting his own safety at risk. There is <sighs> Yeah, by risking getting himself caught by raping boys. Yeah, and fucking beating ugh, mm, disgusting. There is currently a trial that is actually scheduled to happen in October eighteenth of two thousand twenty one, so <gasps> this year against Alexander Flavel and Ian Nicholson. So this case is technically still ongoing. There are still people being charged for this. Yeah. Detective Green at, gave a statement during the trials of how all five convicted abusers had lifelong impacts on, on their victims and how each of these events devastated the quality of their life and their ability to cope moving forward. The ev- uh, investigation in total would cost around one million pounds with over 23,000 documents and there is a mer- major possibility that further charges will be brought up for any victims who have suffered abuse in other establishments not just in uh, Medemsley but like around yeah everywhere all of the detention centers right so they are doing compensation claims right now for the victims So the original terms on it were like you had to know the name of your abuser and you had to be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt in order for you to get any type of compensation. But thankfully, they realized that they were being fucking assholes and to to ease it up. So now it's any type of compensation, whether the person was identified as being responsible or being convicted or whether they were able to identify. Because another yeah. one was like they like ha- as long as they attended the place like they were. Yeah. And had some type of story that they were abused, they would yeah. get some type of claim, which like and one part of the original terms was like they had uh, to be convicted in order for you to get compensation, which was just like fucking oh. ridiculous because like yeah, some of them were dead. Hardly. Yeah. yeah. The compensation that they would get would be between 1,750 pounds and 5,000 pounds. And there were a few extensions on it. So, and each, they said that each applicant is provided with a letter of apology from the Ministry of Justice, which I kind of burned the letter. I don't really give a shit. <laughs> I'm like, fuck you. I'm like, you're, you're part of the problem uh, a little like, bit. Like, thanks, but no thanks? Yeah, like, really Ugh. big no thank you. It's uh, all legal costs would, of course, be covered, so, like, no one would have to worry about that. And there are a lot of, like, law firms in that area that deal with it and promote all those type of resources and whatnot. After the horror of Madams Lee had taken place, they decided to demolish the center and build Hawksfield. So, Hawksfield Secure Training Center would shut down in 2014, and this was due to it having a low capacity, uh, just, like, not enough young custodials yeah. they said but this is also the place where adam rickwood would go and later be found hung in his cell yeah so just not so was it the same type of place kind of just called something different and... yeah it's like a secure training center but it's basically a detention center that's okay it's I don't know why they say training. Like Right, it sounds like military, but it's not. Yeah. It's Adam <laughs> Adam had like a really rough childhood. He did end up going to that training center because I believe he ended up like hitting one of his female family members. So um, it he wasn't going there to train. Like he had done something yeah. bad and it was some kind of form of punishment. But yeah. he if you didn't think that the scandal around Adam Rickwood would be bad enough. There was more scandal when they closed. So they ended up closing on November 9th, but Serico, which is a private company that had operates uh, the prisons for the government had actually been paid for an additional seven weeks up until January 9th, totaling about 1.1 million pounds <gasps> mm-hmm. for an empty building that did nothing. 
they Mm -hmm. the ministry of justice you know that place that sends you that little apology letter Mm -hmm. said that this is completely justifiable because they need security they need electricity they need ac for an empty building that no one (laughs) uses um right a lot of people were comparing this to something out of yes minister which i'm not from the uk it's apparently like an old uk comedy show i don't even know if people like our age would be watching something like that but they that's what they would often compare it to and after it got shut down in 2015 it was supposed to be demolished and basically provide housing to low income people since the uk at the time had over 10,000 names on the waiting list for social housing wow but instead they decided no 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 this is going to make a great place for a women immigration removal center or an okay. IRC. So it would be expected to hold about 80 women. And of course, this caused a lot of controversy because detention centers or immigration centers or training centers, just any kind of center does not do good in this area. I could only imagine right. the vibes I would get. Especially the specific location. Yeah. <laughs> the vibes that I would get from just walking into an area where like all of this bad shit has happened like I can't imagine how dense that air would be it's just uh right so of course yeah a lot of controversy going on because like we would rather get housing for the community and like why are you trying to fucking like cause immigration a immigration center where you're holding people and torturing them like just fucking figure your shit out and do better like don't do this shit angus tano a refugee woman and a community organizer who spent three months in the notorious yarl's wood detention center in 2012 launched a online petition against the move and it had received over 10,000 signatures at the time of her writing it and um one woman had spoken against one of her long-lasting effects in the detention center speaking about her time in the detention center being the worst thing that had happened in her life, even to this day, still having nightmares about it. Uh, she was quoted, I always see these big men dressed in black coming to take me. The detention center itself is a prison camp. We were treated like animals, very rough, and so much inhuman inhumane abuse was happening in that detention center. I saw mentally disturbed women, disabled people, and old people who couldn't even walk. I have seen the most horrendous place in the UK, a place I thought I would find refuge, refuge only to be treated like a terrorist. I don't think I will ever recover from this horrific o- ordeal. Ugh. I wouldn't blame her. I, I really oh wouldn't God. either. It's just, despite the petition, despite everyone's claims, the detention center is set to open this autumn in 2021. <gasps> So it really does scare me that this is something that we as a podcast would continue, unfortunately, of like the horrors. And it's I wish that there was something that I could put down here for our 15 listeners to promote. But it's just like so devastating to know that, like, why are we making this another center of pure horror? Because I know that these women, I just know that they're not going to be treated well. And it really, it, I, 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 it's hard to sleep at night just knowing that shit like this is going on, but it's like, uh. Yeah, because, uh, ugh, like, I don't even want to say it, but, like, obviously the physical, sexual, emotional abuse happens to anyone, male, female, whatever age, but a lot of times it's subjected in a worse way towards women at least throughout history we're subdued as crazy instead of just like oh being in a detention center we're not only in a detention center but we're also crazy and so it's just so yeah it really terrifies me that this is an ongoing thing and I was honestly really shocked Uh, when I read that article, that it is something that is still going. But for Metamsley, it was closed in 1987. 
uh, but it would take more than a decade after that for the tr- even like a glimpse of the truth because you know that's not the whole truth for it to be right. uncovered. Um, just because you know people, some people are just never going to speak of it. Right. So to date, nearly 2,000 men have come forward with their stories of abuse at Madam's Lane. Uh, from around 2002, you had victims like Kevin Young and others that had advocated for an investigation to be done by a fully public inquiry. Um, there are a lot of things that happened in between. Uh, for the sake of this really long episode, I will not go mm-hmm. into it, but you can definitely look it up. But long story short, the Independent Inquiry into Child Sexual Abuse, or IICSA, dropped the investigation of Madam's Lee Detention Center in 2019. So mm. the inquiry's chair at the time, Professor Alexis J., stated that factors such as the victim's age being over the age of 18 at the time of their abuse and as well as criminal proceedings concurring with the investigation factors as to why it was dropped, which I, mm. that doesn't make sense because it's still rape and abuse in like, like 18, like just because you turned over the just age because of, you're of eight. That doesn't. So just because you're not a minor, it's not a thing. I'm, okay. I'm just so 18 is still a child. Like you. So they want to like aim pedophiles and not unconsensual rape acts i don't get because it because the poor child isn't it they just get to dictate whatever it's just it was it, it was really upsetting to hear it like oh, i really got upset and just like looking at her face i'm like i fucking hate you i don't like you right now yeah. like right now you yeah. all my anger is centered towards you lady good thing i will never meet you down the street because we live in total opposite sides of the world Ugh. so mm. solicitors at ben Hor. Bell, which is a law firm that represents some 400 inmates, um, obviously expressed why they believe that IICSA should look into the sexual abuse of inmates over the age of 18, not just children, because it's like it's under the guise that one, they're men, they're boys, two, they're criminals. They don't deserve anything to be done to them. And it's like so even David would say of his experience there at the time, I thought, like, this is just what happens because it's happening to everybody else. And at the time, like, he's told you're a criminal. Like, this is what criminals yeah, get. Yeah, this is normal. Yeah. But it should never have happened. And it shouldn't yeah. have. And that's what people need to hear is that just because these are criminals doesn't mean that these horrific incidences need to be. And you're talking. Yeah. I under I understand, like, uh, if someone commits a crime towards somebody and the victim's family wants revenge and people want revenge and want the that person to suffer the same kind of whatever but it's it's just not what they deserve the time they get sentenced or put to they need reform Ugh, not worse punishment to make them come out more damaged yeah. it's i'm like netville husband sure Beat the shit out sure. of him. Make all the terrible things happen yeah. to him. But you're like, these criminals that we're talking about, they stole a piece of bread. Or they, like, their brother stole right. a watch. Like, it's, ugh. and you're right. Like, it affects them for the whole life. Like, David, again, goes on to say, like, I have been bitter about it my entire life up until now. And he goes, I try not to think about it all the time, but I do think about it every day. And it's like you you try to let it go, but then there are those moments where you're just like, this happened. Yeah. Ugh. About his experience at Madam's Lee, Kevin Young would go on to say, I feel better now that I've had my time in court, and that is all I have ever asked for. By having my say, I can move forward. Despite the pain I have suffered, I am very like lucky in the sense that my soul was never touched, and for that I am grateful. I have no malice against him, talking about husband Neville Husband. Uh, he has to live with whatever he has to live with, and I have to live with whatever I have to live with. Okay. And that is the very fucking tragic history behind Madam, Madam's Lee Detention Center and Hawksfield 
training secure center and freaking the women's detention center that's about to mm. be like horror upon horror upon continuing horror that is this right. little place that I found in UK wow guys UK you you really were not I wasn't ready for you <laughs> yeah well thank you for that um it was definitely tragic but I had never heard of it so I was Uh, I think maybe enlightened would be the wrong term because it's more like dark lightened. But no, it it uh, definitely congrats if you have made it towards the end. Sorry, that was a long one. But yeah, it was just so I could not stop reading article after article after article. And I mean, it goes into so much more detail. It's really unfortunate the things that happen to people. So I don't even know. It's so it's so hard to do a proper ending after this because it's just so. I know. Like, ugh, now I'm in a weird mood. But yeah, those the all victims in that were extremely strong and dealt with it in whatever way that they could. And my heart goes out to them. And I really, really hope that this women's immigration center is not the same. Um, but right. But I, yeah, my heart goes out to them as well. And I only hope the best for the future of this uh, property, I should say. Yeah, I don't know. Please, center, stop being a center. Maybe just. Centre, please. Just be an open field. <laughs> maybe like put some cement over you. Maybe just like disappear. Yeah, maybe like a little bench. Yeah. Just put a bench there in memoriam of all the fucking stupid shit that went on yeah because it was it was a lot and it was indeed fucking stupid and pointless it's just so devastating just all the times it could have been stopped but oh that's fucking church ministers and prison guards for you at least not all prison guards well and it still exists today i mean the the corruption and abuse within the prison systems it still exists and you know, it's just, it's relevant. So that was definitely a doozy, Kristen. Yes, yes, yes. Stay tuned. I have plenty more. But yeah, until uh, until next time, Awkward yeah. Kristen saying goodbye. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok now. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> At R-A-R-W Podcast. Also, don't forget we have a YouTube. Yes. Yes, we do. Audio ad free. Yeah. So mm-hmm. until next time, cheers to oh, that's a good cheers. Like cheers to never sending your son to one of those places. Cheers to not being a boy, but that's insane. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. That's what I was gonna say. Because honestly though, as women, like if we go just a little bit further back in time, men get sent to jail or get no punishment at all and women get sent to insane asyl- asylum. So yep. um <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.